Hello, peeps. Welcome to the Culture and People cast. Today, we have a friend, Gary Ware. Gary, in a few sentences, would you tell us who you are and what you do? Hey, everybody. My name is Gary Ware. And what I do is I facilitate experiences using the power of applied improvisation and play um, with the purpose of helping you learn and grow. Oh, so magical. And we, you know, Gary and I have spent some time ch chatting. I can't wait for you guys to listen to this episode. Please keep going. Okay. So Gary, you have been in the culture and people space for a while, influencing the way that people act and behave within these organizations. Yes. What is your favorite part of this work? Oh man, uh, I have, I have a lot. One of my favorite is working with the group mm. and seeing in the beginning, like, all right, what is this? Maybe there's some people that have like, they're in the back with their arms crossed. Like, mm, I don't know what's up with this, or maybe a little bit of sort of apprehension, but then taking them through an experience. And my favorite part is when that light bulb goes off and then they realize that it's over and they've had so much fun and they learn stuff and, yeah. and they can't wait to continue working on it. And again, yes. Uh, yes, I live on the West Coast. Uh, I live in Southern California and and maybe it's the vitamin D that we get all year round. <laughs> and and I, I'm not trying to sound overly optimistic, but it is possible even in a virtual environment to create that sense of belonging where people are, are having that transformation. So that is what I love because that is lasting. Yeah. That just doesn't end when when it's over like that to change someone's perspective. Actually, I like to say I don't change it. They change it on their own. Yes. And that is magical. Yes. And that's real change management, right? The first step is awareness. You're just raising the awareness. They have to have the desire, the knowledge, the ability to execute, right? So you're just raising their awareness. And I hate to say just because what you do is so valuable, but it's up to them, Stop right? It. These are seeds that we are planting and those lingerers in the back of the room or the ones who are participating fully in the Zoom calls at school, like in your own time, right? In your own time. Yeah. So let's talk about engaging employees. We can talk, you know, virtual, remote, whatever you want to go, but I'm hearing from a lot of leaders that engaging their employees is a challenge. So what are your thoughts on that? It can be, it can be a challenge, especially in our current environment, you know, as of this recording, um, you know, we still have a global pandemic that we're dealing with. Yeah. A number of employees are working remote or a mix of remote and in person. And, you know, we have a lot of new constraints, you know, social distancing, um, you know, things of that like, and I like to say, the definition, as everyone's probably heard this, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over mm -hmm. and expecting different results. Yeah. If you are trying to treat our current environment how you've always treated things, you're, it's not going to work. Mm. And so that is the challenge. Uh, but this is the cool thing. Um, again, I, I tend to be overly optimistic. Um, and I like to look at challenges as opportunities. And this is an opportunity to reinvent. And in order to reinvent, you have to have intention. Like, what is your intention? And that, so, like, when you really break it down to, you know, the most common, like, lowest common denominator, if you're trying to engage your employees, you essentially want them to feel like they belong so that mm -hmm. they can bring their authentic self out so that um, they can get the best work done possible. And so that does require you to like think of like, all right, let's take, for example, a Zoom meeting. Um, again, when we were in person, if we had a meeting, there are some seemingly invisible things that we did that we took for granted. The fact that we can see each other eye to eye, yes. that maybe there was some sort of physical contact um, or like, you know, just something about being in the same room. Maybe there's small talk again, those moments are creating what I like to call the dose, D-O-S-E, which is an acronym for dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Those are the neurochemicals in our body that is going to give us creativity, the ability to focus and, and trust each other and feel like we belong. Again, those seemingly innocent things that we just did that we don't really think about makes us feel like we are part of this group. And as a result, 
um, you know, we feel connected and we want to be there. Well, we just jump on a Zoom call and we just get into it. Yeah. It's you're not going to get the same result. You have to be intentional. You have to do something that, again, it may seem silly. And this is why a lot of times it's scrapped because the content, the quote unquote content is the most important part. And mm -hmm. so, oh, well, let's just scrap that sort of get to know you icebreaker stuff because uh, that's frivolous. No, it's not. It's essential. And by focusing on it and being intentional, it's going to amplify your content because people are going to feel connected. They're going to feel like they have a purpose and they're going to want to engage. So that's just one example. And so my main point, and, and then I'll, and I'll stop talking, is you have to be intentional. You have to think about like, what are we trying to do and, and how can we achieve that? And maybe in a different way. Yeah, I love that. And, and I, okay, so dopamine Say it again. Dopamine. Oxytocin. I got, I was like, I got to remember that. I totally uh, oxytocin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, serotonin, serotonin and endorphins. DOSE. Thank you. Even I, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were talking about like our, our factor. Oh, oh, fact, I always say that wrong. Oh, oh, factory. That's not right. But the smells, like the part of our yeah, brain, yeah, yeah. With I the think smells I and the yeah, triggers yeah. that we get. I mean, just think about like that, even that awareness of the warmth in the room, the temperature in the room, the smells of the room, the familiarity that that brings. So I feel like that is definitely a gap for us right now. And you started my brain thinking, Gary, so let's get really tactical for somebody who's saying, all right, I'm willing to get over the silly. What are some strategies that I, as maybe even an individual employee or maybe even a leader or founder, what can we do tomorrow to start incorporating this into our day-to-day -day behavior? Yeah. So like you said earlier, once you have the awareness, like, all right, things aren't going exactly as uh, we would like it, then... It's all about, and this is where it's, again, I, I love doing this stuff. Maybe some other people just might go, uh, but I, I think of it like as a really cool challenge of like, all right, what can we experiment with that is going to give someone a peak emotional experience? And, and I'm not talking about like, so this is on a spectrum uh, where at the top of the thing is you won the lottery, you just got a million dollars. Like, all right, we're not going to do that. Um, however, you know, I like to say, what is 2%? Because mm. at zero is like bored, like completely like, you know, turned off. And most people, again, when you think about your third or fourth video call of the day, you're just yes. like, oh, just the thought of it, like it's just making you roll your eyes and just want to go, um, you know, jump off a bridge. But like, how can you, again, create some sort of arousal, 2%? And, and what could you do? Again, maybe it's something moving the body. Maybe it's something um, at the top where you are checking in with people. How are you in the chat? Uh, red, red, yellow, green, you know, red is I'm, I'm struggling. Yellow is um, I'm all right. I'm, I'm hanging in there. You know, it has some challenges or green. I'm all in again, you know, allowing people to be come as they are. And, and for us to see each other, mm -hmm. like, what could you do? Um, and yeah, maybe there are like some silly icebreaker games, but again, I find it funny that professional athletes before they do anything that have to do with their craft, they warm up. Michael yeah. Phelps, he does laps. Um, you know, mm. Tiger Woods, he, you know, he is in the driving range and just to get their body in the right state to do what they need to do. Mm. We are professionals and yet we do not warm up our brains. We do not warm up our voices. We do not do any of that. Yes. And we're expected to perform at tip top uh, shape. Like that. Shame on us. Right. Right. Ooh, yes. So how can we warm up the group? And so maybe the uh, if it depends on the type of meeting too. If mm -hmm. this is a meeting where you need people to be creative, maybe you do a warm up where you invite people to be creative in a low stakes environment so they can warm up creativity. Yes. If you need people to think differently because hey, maybe you're going to make some announcements or or we have to strategize on um, you know looking at things from a different angle. Maybe you do a group activity where they're uh, primed, where the brain is primed to um, think about things differently so that when you need them to perform at their best, they're ready to go. Yeah, this is so good, Gary. And, and, you know, I usually think about and use that sports analogy when I talk to people about not having a coach, right? Like, why do you feel like you should do this alone? Like often without even the guidance of your leader, because unfortunately capacity and capability, our leaders are not always there for us. Okay. But then not even with like asking for extra help from people that you know, or a mentor or a sponsor or anything, 
because none of the athletes, they've got like six people on their crew. Right. But now I love adding that, <clears throat> excuse me. I love adding that context of, you know, the sports person warming up. Right. So like really getting your body, your brain and your spirit in the right place to do whatever we're supposed to do. And you know what that would require, Gary, that would require us for really to think, to start thinking about why we're even meeting in the first place. Right. And so maybe then my hope would be, we would meet less and the less meetings would be impactful. Yes. Exactly. Because if you took the time to understand, all right, what's the purpose? Why are we here? Yes. yes. And what's the outcome? And then you, you're right. And maybe you might come to the conclusion, you know, what? Um, after doing the work, this can probably be best over a quick um, dialogue in Slack. Everyone sort of chime in. We're good. Or a quick email. Or maybe we don't need everyone. Maybe we just need three people. We're going to do a brainstorm. And then we're going to send an email recap to the crew. And then when we regroup next week, then, then we'll give an update. Like, again, you're absolutely right. Yes. And that will actually help because, uh, I forgive me, I don't know the source. Uh, I heard about a study that since the global pandemic, employees who are working from home are working anywhere between four to eight hours more a week. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Everybody I talked to, because you know what happened? They lifted and shifted to your earlier comment. They were like in eight hours of meetings a day, sometimes nine. And they said, oh, let's just move all those meetings to Zoom. There was no auditing, right? But we have to move. And this is where I, I, I try not to shame anybody. Like we did all that because we had to be scrappy and because it was a crisis. And now we can move to sustainable. Now we can think about, oh shoot, it's been like 10 months. We could sort of audit how we're doing here and really figure out how to do things better and differently than we've been doing. Yes. Mm. Awesome. I love it. Guys, rewind it. Listen to Gary again. Okay, Gary, I have two quick questions for you before we let you go. First one, who else do you want to shout out that's doing really good work in the ring around culture and people, maybe even as a potential guest? Yeah. All right. I, I have to, uh, I have to shout out my, my boy, Jeff Harry, uh, because Jeff Harry is of like a fellow play evangelist. Jeff, if you're watching, we see you, um, him and I, we, we do an amazing, uh, workshop called dealing with a-holes at work uh, using play. Um, oh. or if a-holes is too strong of a topic, we, you know, dealing with toxic work environments. At the end of the day, um, Jeff is an amazing person that is using positive psychology and play um, as a way to help people uh, really rise to their full potential. Um, he, he, like, if you think I bring the energy, no, 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 no. Jeff is like times three. Gary, he was um, on my show. I know. I was like, oh, bring it. Oh, yes. oh my gosh. All right. So all right, now I have to bring another person. All right. Okay. Jeff, all right. So <laughs> Jeff has already been, Jeff has already been um, spoken for. Okay. Great. Um, another person. All right, here we go. Um, that I think would be amazing. And uh, I would I, hopefully she has time, but I know she's so busy because she's in such high demand. Uh, her name is Vanessa Van Edwards. Uh, she runs the website Signs of People, uh, where uh, she calls herself a recovering awkward person. And she helps people use science to communicate better. Um, to be more confident and it, she's an amazing person and she actually did some recent stuff on um how to read micro micro expressions through a mask um how Ooh. to reduce burnout um how to really you know find your joy at, you know at work she's an amazing person again she's in such high demand i don't even know if she has 10 minutes uh, and she's also a mom to a very very beautiful daughter sienna um, so, uh, but she would, she would bring massive value to the show, especially since Jeff's already here and, uh, already been there. So there we go. Oh my gosh. I I'm so interested in her micro expressions because when I don't go very many places, but when I do, I'm such a, like, I, I used to work in service. So I always want to engage the grocer, the person. So I'm this person who's like, my eyebrows are like, I'm really trying to express a lot through my eyebrows. <laughs> I'll have to look into her work, Gary. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. So last question here before I let you go, um, to try to get my frame of thought back is, um, resources. What are your favorite resources around culture and people that have advanced your thinking? Okay. Uh, this book is called prime to perform by 
uh, Lindsay McGregor and Neil Dosey. And this book, it, it is just amazing because what it did was it took the science of motivation and they put a framework around it. Um, there's a score. It's called a TOMO score, total motivational score. And mm. it goes from zero or negative 100 to 100. And they found that teams that um, have a TOMO score of like 45 plus um, or more adaptive, uh, they stay they stay at the company longer. You know, they have higher job satisfaction. And all that it's measuring are six key areas. Um, they are the external motivators that we used to think were the ways that we get people to do work. And mm -hmm. it does work for tactical performance. So, you know, to do your bare minimum of your jobs. And those key areas are emotional pressure, as in, um, you know, oh, I don't want to make a mistake. Oh, I don't make a mistake. And in the not wanting to make a mistake, you know, you mm -hmm. sort of focus a little bit more um, economic pressure. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's where bonuses and stuff come in or the lack of money comes in and inertia inertia is like the lowest. So those are negative um, in their, in their book. Inertia is you, you just did it because you did it yesterday. Yes. Um, you know, you don't even know why you're there. Uh, yeah. But this is the cool thing. They also look at the internal motivators and that's play purpose and potential. Mm. And if you can see your work is play for the sake of doing it, um, you're going to be more motivated. Uh, you're going, so what the three internal motivators, it is helping you be more adaptive. Yes. Uh, so it's play. So you see the work as play. You do it for the sake of doing it. Uh, purpose, uh, the work, you see how the impact of the work that you're doing is impacting other people. Mm -hmm. And then potential, uh, that's either your own potential um, to move up within a company or the potential for where you work to do great things. So again, Prime to Perform, amazing book. And it, and it talks and it gives great resources on how you can create that culture that mm. is like the, you know, Southwest, the Whole Foods, you know, those types of, those types of people. Okay. Well, I read three books a month and that's going on March because I was just figuring out, like I have February's, it's going on March because you have me so interested. I work with high-performing teams specifically around how to create entrepreneurial mindsets, right? Where we're owning our own impact. Like, oh, I'm all over that, Gary. Thank you for that recommendation. Optimize. And you can take the survey. So they okay. have a survey where you can it asks you the questions and it will give you your TOMO score and you mm. can send it to your team and it will give your team's TOMO score. And mm. it's meant to be not like a, uh, it's, it's meant to be a barometer. So mm -hmm. it, it ebbs and flows, but mm -hmm. the cool thing is you can optimize for it. And they find that high performing teams, the things that motivate them is the work. So how can you optimize yes. the environment so that the work is the thing that's driving you instead of um, the fact that you may make a mistake or bonuses or in the case of, well, I'm, I've, I've been here for 10 years, you know, why, why not? So. Yes. Oh, Gary, I love it. And I have kept you longer than I committed to you, but I really appreciate the extra time. And thank you most for doing all that you are for work and culture and people in the workplace. It's a big deal. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, this is, this is my life's work. So I, I can talk about this stuff all day, every day. Awesome. Well, we are going to connect to all of your social media so that people can find you, your website, your work, and hopefully partner with you in some way or follow you at least online through LinkedIn or any of our other socials. So we appreciate you, Gary, sending you guys peace and progress.